Damn it! Ugh, I always do this. Oh, this is terrible. It's so annoying. So while I'm taking this apart, let's talk about things that usually go bad on these trolling motors. One, the biggest thing that goes bad on these things are the switches. So let's say you have a variable speed unit like this one, and you've got five speeds forward, three speeds reverse. Typically what will happen is you'll go to like one or two and nothing will happen and then you'll hit three and then you'll have power and then you'll go to four and then you won't have any power. Usually that's a good indication that your switch is bad. It's not gonna be your armature or any of the brushes or anything like that because if those were good, they would work on every single speed. There's no reason for those not to work while your switch is working fine. Like I said, I'll have those linked down below in the description. The switches that you can buy from Minn Kota are about $15. You can buy them about the same price on Amazon. I'll leave that down below in the description so you can go purchase one of those. The other problem is your armature usually goes bad or you know, you you end up getting water in the case or something like that, or the brushes wear out. The brushes on these things actually last for a very long time. And uh, unless you use it a lot and you have like maybe a, a 24 or a 32 volt system that really eats up the brushes, you, you're probably not gonna see that very often. So a new problem has arised. Uh, I put together that trolling motor and hooked it up to a battery and tried to turn on the switch and nothing happened. I think there's probably just a loose wire somewhere or the brushes aren't sitting on the commutator correctly. I may have damaged the armature while I had it out. So we're gonna take it apart. We're gonna test the armature on this trolling motor now and hopefully we'll figure out what's going on. All right, so we found the culprit. It was one of those cheap connectors I was using before that I bought from Amazon. Went down to the hardware store to Ace Hardware and bought a bunch of female uh, insulated terminal connectors. So this is a 50 count. They were like 13, 14 dollars. Not too bad. All right, finally got it all back together. What we're going to do now is while I have it out, we're just going to go ahead and test this armature just to show you guys how to test it. Okay, first of all, you just take a block of wood, just any piece of scrap wood you have laying around will work. Put it in a vise, and then you take a 3 8 drill bit and you just drill a hole in the wood. Then that way you can set your armature directly in these wood. All right, first we're just gonna identify some parts, that way you guys know what I'm talking about. First you have your shaft, which runs from top to bottom. This is also gonna be your ground. And then you have your commutator, which is this piece right here. Then you have the commutator bars, which run all the way around the commutator. So the commutator is connected to all these windings, which is wound around the commutator stack, which is all these bars. Basically this creates electrical field, which uh, with the magnet helps the motor turn around. So the only tool you're gonna need to test out your armature is obviously you need to be able to have the tools to take it apart, but to actually test it, you're only gonna need a voltmeter. Now you don't need a high-end fluke like I have. You can just use like a regular Walmart one that's like 15 or 20 bucks. I'll actually link one down below in the description so you guys can pick one up. Uh, the only thing that you do need to have is that it make sure it tests resistance. And that's that little ohm symbol right there at the top. Okay, so there are three different tests you wanna do. One's called the 180 test, one's called the parallel, and then the other one's the ground. So I'm gonna show you these real quick and then we'll go up close and do them. You have the 180 test, which is one across from the other on the commutator. Then you have the bar to bar test, which is one bar next to each other. And then you also have the bar to ground. So you'll take the shaft and the bar and those are the three tests that we're gonna do. Now we're gonna show up close so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, like I said, the first one's gonna be a 180. So you take this one that's right here, just pick any random one, but then you wanna go straight across from it, the one that's 180 degrees out from it. So what you're looking for on your ohm reader is any resistance, really. You're not gonna know the exact resistance of an armature unless you actually have the specifications for it. So this one's reading 0.4, so 4 tenths of an ohm. So that's okay. That's our baseline. So now what we wanna do is go to the next one and then we wanna try out the, the next 180. And that one's 4 tenths of an ohm. So we just wanna keep going around and basically what you're looking for is consistency within a couple tenths of an ohm. So that one's 0.5, that one's good. And this one's 0.4, got 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and 0.3. All right, so the 180 test passed. Next we're gonna do a bar to bar. And just like it sounds, it's gonna be one bar and then the next one right next to it. That's reading 0 0.3. Three tenths, four tenths, four tenths, four tenths, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And then the last test is you wanna take each bar and go to ground. So you can take 
and put your top lead on the ground and just go from bar to bar. And what you're looking for here is an open lead. So you want an unlimited amount of resistance because there is no closed circuit. None of these bars should be grounded. And like I said, on those two first tests, the 180 test and the bar to bar test, you're just looking for consistency. So if you have 0.3 to 0.6 ohms all the way around, then you're good to go. If you have one that's reading like 4.5 and all the rest are 0.3, that probably means you have some kind of damage to your armature. At that point, I wouldn't worry about trying to repair these. Uh, that's way beyond my skill level. If you think you can figure it out, go ahead. Uh, these things are about $30, I think. And I'll definitely link those down below in the description. So if you are having that issue, you can go ahead and uh, make sure you're looking for the part for your specific motor. All of these have part numbers or model numbers stamped on uh, somewhere on the motor. Usually they're on the tilt mechanism. All right, before we test this motor out, we're going to talk about a couple other issues that you may have with your motor that we haven't covered yet. So the biggest problem obviously is going to be that your battery isn't at a high enough voltage to operate the switch. So easy test, We've got our battery and we wanna set it for alternating current and we test your battery. A battery that's fully charged at a resting phase should be at about 12 and a half volts. And that battery should be able to power your trolling motor when it's sitting at a resting position of about 11.3 volts or somewhere in there. Once you get much lower than that, you're not gonna have a whole lot of juice left. The other problem that we could have on a battery is that one of your cells are dry. These ones actually have a maintenance cell on them. So if you want, you can crack these open. I'm not going to right now, but you just take a flathead screwdriver You'll check the water level. There's a bunch of lead plates in there and the water should be just above those plates. There is also acid in here, but they don't want you to replace the acid in these batteries. So if you do actually end up draining one and it's not holding any charge anymore, uh, these batteries I believe have a one or two year warranty on them. So you can literally go back to Walmart, tell them, hey, my battery's not working. I need to swap it out with another one. They'll do a battery test on it. And most of the time they'll see that it's got a dead cell and they really don't go any further than that and they'll just swap it out for you. Oh, and make sure when you replace that water, you use distilled water and not like tap water or purified water. The reason being is because distilled water is pure water. There are no minerals in it and it's not gonna corrode whatever's inside your battery. The other issue we could be, which should be a pretty obvious one if you see it, is your wires could be melted and uh, maybe they short it out or something like that. If you have an inline fuse, like I recommend you put on there, it may have blown, so check that fuse and then Pretty much any other issue that you're gonna have with the trolling motor is something that we've already discussed. All right guys, let's go ahead and give this motor a test and see if we actually fixed our issues. And one other thing before we get started, when you do hook up your battery leads, red is typically positive and black is typically negative. That's not always true. Somebody could have wired it themselves and it's all backwards. In that case, if you turn your motor on forward and it's going reverse, you need to swap your battery leads. And another thing, make sure you don't run these trolling motors out of the water for very long. If you don't have any water flowing over top of them to take that heat away, you can burn up your windings in your armature. All right, so speed one works. Two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. And make sure you have a change in the speed every notch you go up. If it's all one consistent speed, that may be a sign that you have a burnout switch. Some people may not be worried about running at full speed all the time, but it's not good for the switch and you definitely want to replace that. So now we'll go ahead and test the reverse. One, two, three, two, one, zero. Awesome, everything works as we uh, planned it to. All right guys, that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you guys have any comments or questions about anything that went on in today's video, make sure you guys go leave those down in the comment section. If you all need to buy any parts or the products or any of the tools that I used in today's video, that'll all be linked down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you guys next time. This is why things always take me so long. I'm so scatterbrained when I do things. So I usually end up doing things two or three times.